Hey guys, Sock here from Socky Tech, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about iOS 13 running on an iPhone XS Max and the iPhone XS. And of course, these are all the new features to expect with iOS 13. So let's dive in and get started. And the very first thing I do want to talk about has to do with the new night mode slash dark mode. So basically, if you go to your settings and if you go into your display, you'll notice that we now have a light and a dark theme. And I'll choose something real quick. Now, if I switch over to this one, it's gonna give you a, a nice, dark, easy on the eyes theme. And if you go back here, you just get the standard version. Now, when you go into your phone uh, application over here, or when you go into your messages application right over here, you'll see the regular standard white background. And of course, if you go into any Apple installed application, such as the calendar right over here, uh, let's just go back into the full view. Uh, or even if you go to news application, you'll see a white background as you can see. Now, when you go into the settings and switch over to the dark mode, uh, this dark theme applies system-wide across Apple applications. And I'm sure it is going to extend very soon to all the other apps as well. So when I go back into the phone application, that's what I get right over here. Okay, when I go to my uh, messages application, that's what I get. When I go to my when I go into my music app, that's what I see. When I go into my calendar application, that's what I see. And again, if I go back into the news app right over here, that's what you see. You get black background. That's going to be easy on the, easy on the eyes and also save you some battery. Even if you go to the calendar application, just to show you guys as much as possible, you'll get that nice black background. Okay, so that's the dark mode, uh, the dark theme. So let's go back to light. And I do want to show you one more thing. If you pull down the notifications panel right over here, uh, the control center, when you press and hold on the actual brightness slider, it's going to expand. And you can also toggle the dark mode on and off right from here. So I can tap on this one. And now when I go to the settings, as you can see, we're back in the dark. And if I go to the phone, back in the dark. All right. So you can do it right from here uh, real quick as well. Now, if you do go to the settings, though, you get some additional options. You have this option to turn on or off the dark mode automatically. So when you enable this, you get two options. You go inside here, you can set it to go sunset to sunrise. So from sunset, it turns into dark, and by sunrise, it goes back to the light theme, which is this one, which makes sense because in the morning time, it doesn't matter if it's too bright, but at nighttime, the darker mode is much easy on the eyes. And I do know some people are going to keep it this way anyway because it looks cool. Uh, but if you go back in here, you can also do a custom schedule so you can have the light appearance come at a certain time and the dark appearance activate at a certain time. Okay, so those are the details uh, for the actual dark mode. Now, one more thing I want to talk about. If you press on the volume uh, buttons over here, you get a volume slider. You can actually interact with that right on the screen. If you let it go, it goes to the side real quick. And then if you want to bring it back, you just press that button again and it's going to be right over there. OK, so that's one thing you have as well. The next thing I want to talk about has to do with your photos application. So when you go into your photos application, when you click on edit on any given photo, you now get enhanced tools and a new interface to actually customize the photos. I mean, edit the photos. So at the bottom of the screen, you have all these different modes. If I tap on auto, for example, I can use the slider to make modifications to that photo. I can change the exposure. I can change the brilliance. I can change the highlights. I can change the shadows and all the things that make these things amazing. So look at that. I can change the contrast and the brightness as I please. So I can really fine tune any photo that I please right over here. And you do have so many options, saturation, black point, vibrance, warmth, tint, sharpness, definition, uh, noise reduction, and also this option right over here. So those are the new powerful photo editing tools found in the notes uh, in, in the photos application. Now, let me cancel this and I'm going to show you one more thing. Uh, if I pick a video, as you can see right over here, let's pick this one right over here. And if I click edit on that video, I get the same powerful tools for the actual video. So again, over here, I can tap on these buttons. I can rotate the entire video if I want to. 
I can even apply this uh, option here with the video. Okay, so look at that. I can go inside here and I can change the brightness of the actual video by tapping on this one. That's just amazing. Exposure, highlights, shadows, contrast, brightness, everything I showed you in the photos is also available right here. So these are some powerful tools uh, to edit video and photos uh, right on your iPhone. And of course, one big feature that we have that's gonna be a brand new change a lot of people are going to welcome is we do have the new Apple CarPlay. When you connect your phone to your car, you get a nice and refreshed interface as you can see. We did have the old interface with apps right in front of you, but this new interface gives you the map right in front if you want, and a couple apps on the side, as well as a music player and all that good stuff. I think it looks really nice and refreshing. So that's the new Apple CarPlay. The next new feature has to do with the Maps application. So when I click on the Maps application, now I just search uh, for uh, California, Cupertino right over here. And basically what you get here is you have the look around option, which is the equivalent of the street view for Google Maps. So you search a city and a state, and if it's available, it's gonna show up at the bottom right here. It's gonna say look around right there. When you tap on it, it's going to give you a full street view. And of course, you can actually move around. So look, you can see everything nice and clear, the sky, the, the, the road, all the businesses, all the houses, and you can tap on the screen uh, simply to go forward and explore the city right on your phone. Okay, that's absolutely fantastic. Look at that, I can go anywhere that I want simply by tapping on the screen. So it's the equivalent of uh, Google's street view. And I'll let you know right now, it may not be available for every city and state around the world or in America, but it's gonna be, it's gonna be getting there, okay? And one more thing with Maps application is as you zoom in on the maps, you'll simply see more fine details on the actual map. Uh, so it's been enhanced as well. All right, let's move on to the next new thing. If I go into my text messages and if I go into my emojis or my emojis, let's just go to an emoji right over here and let's uh, try to add a new one. So let me click on plus. Now what's gonna happen is the interface here is the same, but you are getting so many more hairstyles, headwears and makeup to customize uh, your own Memoji as much as possible. Now, not something I use often, or actually not at all, but some people do use these things so you get more options to customize your own character, okay? Just be aware of that. If you already have an existing character, go inside and redo it to make it even more uh, customizable. Many more options included inside here. The next thing I wanna talk about has to do with your Find My Mobile and Find My Friends application. So when you go into search and uh, type in Find, now that application, uh, Find My Mobile and Find My Friends application has been consolidated into the Find My app, okay? So you can click on that. I'm not gonna click on that right now because it's gonna reveal all kinds of private information. But uh, if you click on yours, you'll see that you can do everything in one application, which is much better than having two applications, which is too redundant. And of course, we do have a new Reminders application, which has been enhanced as well. So let's uh, type in Reminders over here. Okay, so as soon as you go inside, you'll notice the new look. So everything is better organized and just looks cleaner overall. And also, Reminders is now very smart it is, it works together with Siri. So when Siri thinks you may need a reminder based on context, it can make that suggestion to create a reminder on the go, okay? But this is the new interface here. You got the today, let's just click allow. You got scheduled, all flagged, and you just have this new stuff. I can add a list by tapping this button. You know, I can pick uh, from any of these colors. Uh, any of these icons, so that's just gonna look great. Give it a name as well, just did, let's do X for now, and it's gonna show up right there. And when I go inside, I can then click uh, on New Reminder, and then you get the New Reminder style, all right? You can just start writing things right here, okay? So that's the New Reminder application. Now, if you do have a smart home setup, you also have some uh, enhancements there as well. So if you go into our control panel, and if I go to my home kit right over here, 
it's gonna expand, it's gonna show me all the rooms in my house that I can control with my phone, such as my smart lights. So basically when I press and hold on any particular uh, light in the house, it's going to expand and give me this new interface. From here I can change the colors and everything of the, of the actual light bulb, and also change the uh, intensity of the light, you know, the brightness of the light, and then on, when I'm done, I can click on X and I'm good to go. Again, you press and hold on any light that you want, you can also go to the settings by tapping this one uh, to modify your home even more, as you can see. So the whole thing has been refreshed and looks better and more intuitive now. So that's just one more thing. And of course, we do have a lot of improvements under the hood that make the phone faster and snappier overall. It is hard to show you that, but it's easy to feel it once you upgrade from iOS 12 to iOS 13. So drop your comments down below if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, and let me know if you did upgrade from iOS 12 to iOS 13 and what you think about the new interface. Nothing revolutionary, but we do have some minor enhancements here and there that just make iOS 13, iOS overall, a little bit better for us. All right, so if you found this video useful, make sure to subscribe to Saki Tech by clicking that button and also click that bell icon on the side to make sure you get notified every time I upload a new video. And if you do use Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook, you can follow me at Saki Tech Online to get the latest updates as well. All right, have a fantastic day.